Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus. Today I was just scrolling by the Checkpoint Community Forum and I was checking uh, one of Heiko's posts. If you don't know already who Heiko is, he's, um, well, the member of the year in the Checkmate community. And I think he has already been that three times. The, the competition is like three years and uh, I think that he has won all of them. He is at least one of the champions within the Checkmate community. And in the bottom of this top 25 gateway tuning tips, he has uh, tip number 24. Let's just scroll down here. So if you have been working with networking for a while, you know that monitoring is really important. And most monitoring is done with SNMP. And um, when you query something, it's normally like five minutes interval or something. You don't really query all the time. And if you have a speak, uh, a spike within the, the communication, like a small drop due to a burst of traffic or something, this is normally really hard to find out. So within Gaia 3.10, there is a new function called CPU spike detection. And this tool was introduced within R8040 hotfix 69. So in this case, I will just call it an R81 feature that is backported down because the Gaia 3.10, it was already in, introduced in R8030. Uh, I don't know if it will be backported down even further, but more or less what it is, is um, Checkpoint keeps monitoring of, of things a lot more frequently than only five minutes. And the CPU spike is something that you can see like if a CPU or a process or a, a core within your gateway is actually going a lot higher than normal, you get a specific alert in a specific view, both within the CPU view and also within a, a log file. So if we check the SK166454, have it here. So just scroll up to the top. So first of all, this is for security gateway. And normally when it writes security gateway, it doesn't include like Maestro or VSX. So I just assume that this is for the normal gateways. And it also say here that the, the tool is from uh, Gaia OS 3.10 and it was introduced in Jumbo Hotfix 69 for R8040. So functions like this actually comes within Jumbo Hotfixes. So it's not only the like main feature, there come a lot of small changes that can be really good. So what is the condition to actually detect the spike? Well, it says here that a spike in the CPU core utilization is considered when these conditions are met. And I actually assume that both of these con um, conditions needs to be met to this to be uh, detected. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really checked. I have a hard time actually checking this, but when they write like this, I assume that both uh, conditions need to be met. So the CPU utilization need to be over 80% and this threshold is apparently configurable. I haven't checked where you can actually configure this. So this is something maybe we should check out later. Uh, CPU utilization for a specific CPU core is at least 1.5 times higher than the entire system average utilization. And this is also configurable. This is to ensure that high utilization system, for example, during performance testing will not detect all CPU cores as spiked. So this is the reason why I believe that both conditions need to be actually be met for this to, well, to warn. A thread or process is considered as spiked when it meets the below condition. It needs to be running on a spiked CPU core. Utilization needs to be over 70% and this threshold is configurable. Utilization is at least 1.5 times higher than the system average. And this is also configurable. So what actually happens when a spike is detected? Well, if we scroll down here, there are um, views from CP view that you actually can see it. I haven't seen mine in CP view, um, but keep in mind when, when it's the, CP view, you're actually checking on, on one minute interval, so it can be hard to find it um, if you don't really experience like super high load or something. And why is it important to actually find out spikes in a specific CPU? Well, I mean, 
the box itself doesn't need to be fully loaded for you to experience like quality issue for example on VoIP or IPsec tunnels and so on. Some processes are only handled by one core so they are not multi-threaded and you may have uh, a different load on your cores depending on how your system is set up like are you putting too much on SND cores or how are you actually using them. So this is a uh, example on how it looks. So there are a new um, part in CPView that is actually introduced within this. So if we open our own VMware, we can check it here. So I'm logged in as um, uh, expert on the gateway. So if I write CPView, then I get up the CPView view and I will move it a little bit more so you can actually see it. And then you can go under CPU and here you have the new one and it's called spikes. So here you can see like which CPUs are uh, being spiked and you can also see uh, threads or specific processes that is being spiked. So this is one more way for support or yourself to actually find out what happened to the specific system during this time. So it's easier for troubleshooting when it comes to like, well, we have um, SIP issues or like uh, voice over IP or something else that is like critical on, on real time uh, communication, like video or voice is normally critical. Um, this also is visible within the history and for history, I believe it's uh, dash T. Uh, and then you can check the timestamps plus and minus and you will be able to move back and forward within CPV. You can select specific dates as well. I have a video regarding CPV and I will put it in the yeah, this corner. But there are also possibility to check this in the log files. So if we go back to the SK itself, we see here that uh, the spikes are reported within three places. So it's reported within this specific log file if you're running below R81. So if we check this one, so let's go back to our VMware environment, and then we can just write cut and paste the specific log file. And we see that we have had this issue on this specific gateway. Keep in mind, like this gateway from time to time only have one CPU core because when you not have enough licenses, it will throttle back. But this is how it can look. And maybe this is just mumbo jumbo uh, text for you guys, but this is something that support can at least use. And within R81, it's present within the normal var log messages, like where you get all the other information. So var log messages, uh, well, it's full of different things. And in my case, it's full of, um, well, installer packages and so on. <laughs> um, I haven't really checked here, but um, I think it's really nice that Checkpoint is introduced more and more functionalities to help both uh, us as administrators and to help the Checkpoint support um, to actually find out the reason why something happens. So, so in general, more information like this is, is needed. And I hope they will bring this to, to VSX. I think within VSX, it can be more complicated because then you have, well, virtualization within the box. So maybe it's harder to actually figure out what is using what. Um, there are some issues when it comes to CPU loads, when it comes to SNMP on VSX, um, that doesn't exist on the normal gateways. Um, more in that in the VSX series. This new tool, Spike Detect Daemon, is uh, running by default, so it's nothing that you need to enable. Um, it's enabled, well, by default. And there is possibility to enable and disable this, and all of this is actually um, present within the SK. If you want to uh, uh, change any variables on this um, um, new daemon or this new tool, well, first you need to stop the tool and then you need to change the configuration within this file. So to stop the tool, you just need to, well, 
copy paste from the SK. And we can do that just to, to show. So I will do clear and paste. And now you can see that the process itself is terminated. And we can go back into the, this file and change it. And to change a file, um, I normally use VI. And then just uh, uh, paste in the directory. So here you can see like the type of values that you can actually change. Um, I bet there are I bet there are like a guide on how you should change this, but uh, my normal recommendation for things like this, keep it to default. If you don't know what you're doing, keep it to default. Um, there should be specific reasons why you're changing in a configuration file like this. And if you're changing stuff within a configuration file, keep in mind that not all of this information is translated or uh, remained when you either when you reboot the box or when you do upgrades. So all the changes that you do in a default file, make sure to write them down in your documentation system and uh, keep a copy of the changes that you have done. Because when you do an upgrade, just assume that they are not included, that it goes back to default. It's not true for all, but it's a good assumption that you should take because then you make sure that your settings is actually remaining after your upgrade. So you go back and check all that you have actually changed. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. And uh, my recommendation to you guys is to, to check out Heiko's post. He has a lot of nice stuff that is, um, well, really well covered. And you get a lot more information if you actually read them than just listening to my videos. I take up the basic and just show you where you can actually find this information and read it for yourself. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.